Well, if you guys will notice, I'm here with CNJ113, which can only mean one thing. I'm in Minersville, and that's because if we go to the other side of the station, that is. If you'll notice that very faint headlight across the railroad crossing there down the track, that's the new St. Nick crew getting the mine cars ready to come back down. They have 50 loads, I'm told. And it'll be interesting to see what happens. Potentially PNMV is going to have to meet them somewhere to help tell them the rest of the way down because the crew might run of hours. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a train crew can only run so many hours before they, what's called outlawing. It's a law that I'm pretty sure nobody can work over 12 hours on the railroad or something like that. I'll do some research and correct myself if I'm wrong, but I believe that is the limit. So guys, stick around and let's see what happens. What happens next is pretty much what past me said on the station platform. By the time the new St. Nick job, or NSNX, had finished loading their 50 outbound coal hoppers, they had outlawed. The term outlaw sounds worse than what it really means, as it simply means that a train crew has reached the maximum number of hours that they're allowed to operate the movement of a train, which is 12 consecutive hours. This is a regulation enforced by the Federal Railroad Administration, or FRA, and it exists in order to ensure railroad workers receive sufficient periods of rest so that they can perform their jobs safely. With NSNX being on duty at 5 a.m. that day, they had reached their 12-hour maximum by 5 p.m., which is about when I arrived in Minersville. As a result, the crew had to let their train sit just north of the crossing and wait to be relieved by another crew. This relief crew would be brought up to Minersville by the same PNMV job from my last video of Reading and Northern Coal Trains of Schuylkill County. Once PNMV had arrived in Minersville and dropped off their relief crew, which took over control of NSNX, they traveled south to Westwood Junction, where NSNX would meet them to conduct a motive power switch on the two trains. I'll explain more once we get there.
Okay, let me explain what happens next. Here you can see P and M V with 2530 and 3057 off on the branch running to Good Spring, Pennsylvania, as the NSNX arrives with 3053 in 2004. This is so that the relief crew on NSNX, which is actually the Good Spring job, could detach 3053 and 2004 from the loaded coal hoppers and travel south through Westwood Junction to hook onto two hoppers and two tank cars, which is the freight for the Good Spring job that was brought up by PNMV and left at Westwood Junction on their move to relieve NSNX. Then the PNMV with 2530 and 3057 backed off the branch to Good Spring and onto the Minersville branch to move north to hook onto the coal cars brought down from NSNX. This will allow the Good Spring job, now with their motive power that was on NSNX, to depart for Good Spring and clear the way for PNMV to travel south back to Port Clinton with the coal loads. Whew, that was a lot to clarify, and hopefully it clears it up. The simple summary is that this was the easiest way to get the PNMV locomotives back to Port Clinton and to efficiently get motive power on the Good Spring job, as there were no other locomotives available in Cressona at the time. And, one final side note, the yard job of Port Clinton, or YJPN crew, was taxied into Westwood Junction by the railroad to take over PNMV, as the PNMV's crew was now approaching outlaw status. As a result, PNMV's crew was let off at the Beckville Road Railroad Crossing, and the YJPN crew took the coal loads the rest of the way back to Port Clinton, which is where everything was tied down for the day. With all of that out of the way, please enjoy this pretty epic action on the Minersville branch.